All right, so the last step of this process is after all the photos are added, we want to turn this map into an interactive map. Right now, it's just a static map. We could make a print copy of it. Uh, it's just showing our what type of layers and data we're visualizing. So we actually want to make this interactive and have it display in a web browser. And to do that, there's a couple different methods, but we're going to use a zip file upload method for this. So we just need our volcano data. And I'm going to show just kind of how this looks like in the actual folder. So right now, this is what our volcano data actually looks like in the folder. It's got all these different file types and then all these lock files. And we want to remove these lock files because we don't want to upload those, but we do need all the rest of these files right here. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually just save this project and close it down because that will end our active session that we are working in. I'm just going to close out of ArcGIS and I'm going to go to my folder here. So now all those lock files are gone. And we want to package all of this data up to put into online. So I'm going to right click and do new and then zip folder. So we want to compress the data and I'll just call this volcano. And we'll just select all of these and just put them right in our zip folder. If we open it up now, we can see all the data in here. And this is the actual one that we're gonna upload. So at this point, if you go to a browser window, open up a browser. I'm going to go to stolif.maps.arcgis.com. And this is going to open the St. Olaf ArcGIS online site. In order to log in here, we'll do sign in and you do not want to type your login information in the fields. You want to make sure that you have the St. Olaf College button. There might be, instead of the button, a field that says your organization URL. If that happens, just type in Stolif and enter, and then the button will show up. So we'll click on that, and then we can choose our account. So to upload the data, I'm going to go to Content, and we want to create this as a feature layer because that means it's a layer that we can put on a map and redesign. So to do that, we're going to click on new item and then we're gonna add that zip folder to this part of the window. I'm just gonna open this back up, click and drag it right in there. And it reads it as a shape file and that's what we want it to do. If it doesn't read it as a shape file, that means it just needs to be repackaged. If you are missing any of those files, any of these files right here, usually that will cause it to not read it as a shape file and it might be corrupted. So just make sure that this has shape file right here. And we'll do next. And we can just call this volcano data and then save should take just a couple seconds to upload. It's a relatively small set of data and we can view it in the map viewer right now, but actually what we wanna do is we wanna start with our map. So I'm just gonna click on this map tab right up here and it's gonna give us a blank map. And we can add our layer by going to add and search for layers. And it's gonna bring up all of the information that we have on our account. This is the data we just created. So I'm gonna click on this little button to add it. And now we can see it on our map. And at this point, you can do some redesign with it. You can change the base map. Uh, we can do a hybrid imagery. This will show the labels. This is kind of one of my favorites, but any one of these will work. There's a National Geographic that looks kind of cool. It's really based on how your data looks on the map. You want to choose the one that will make it uh, the easiest to see your points. And if we don't like these little red dots, it's kind of hard to see it in some areas. We can click on this shape right here 
and we'll want to do it by name. So we get individual points for all of our locations and we'll do this select single symbol and click on options. And right now it's kind of giving us some white dots, which we don't want. So I'm going to click on symbols right here and we're going to see what kind of shapes we have. Um, it would be nice if we can find some red triangles, but if we can't do that, then this might work. These little red circles right here, make those a little bit bigger and then do okay. And those are still pretty small and the red kind of gets lost. So something that might work better is this yellow. We'll make this bigger and do okay. So now we can kind of see all of our points there. And if it still looks like it's getting lost in some areas, adjust the color and see what happens. Um, you want to make sure that it, it can be easily visible on the entire map. Do Let's try this purple. Yeah, that works pretty well. And then we'll hit okay and then done. So at this point, you can actually share this map. We can save it, save as, and a volcano map, and then hit save map. And so here is our version. And to share this, you want to hit share. And in order to have this uh, be public for everybody to see it, it will need to be public. If you lock it to just St. Olaf College, then somebody will have to log in to see it. So in order for everyone on the internet to be able to view it, uh, you have to make sure to click this everyone public option and it will update a link to this map. So we're just going to select that for now and copy that and then hit done. And if you open up a new browser, we can enter our link and there is our map. And if we want to see what the photos will look like, we can actually zoom in. We'll zoom in on the point that we added a photo to. And if we click on it, there was this entry for photos that we created and a link for more info. And if you click on the link, it will open the picture for anyone to view. So that's kind of in general how it will look if you add the points to an interactive map. And at this point, there's any type of customization or um, design that you can do to it. But this map can be shared or posted online for anyone to interact with.